Hi, I'm Bruce Bouquet of the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Welcome to Numerical Methods, how to use computers to solve difficult math problems. In this lesson, we'll be discussing numerical stability for ordinary differential equations. Here in this lesson, we'll discuss only one-step methods and the stability of one-step methods. Those are the methods that we've dealt with up to this point. Euler's method, Taylor series method, Runge Kutta two-step, Runge Kutta four-step. One-step methods are the methods where we know the x and y value at a certain time, and we use that in order to get the y value at the next time. That's called a one-step method. Multi-step method is one where we might go back and use several y and x values in order to compute the next value. Here we're only going to deal with one-step methods. Let's discuss what we mean by stability for a method of solving differential equations. What we mean by stability is that our computed solution should get close to the true solution or an equilibrium solution or a fixed point as x or t gets large. That is, if the true solution is going to zero, that our computed solution should not grow large. That would be a real problem. What we're going to find out is that the stability criterion may depend on the step size. For certain differential equations and for certain methods, maybe the step size will be an important contributing factor as to whether the method gets close to the true solution, whether the method shrinks when the true solution shrinks. Typically, there are problems with numerical methods for differential equations if the derivatives are changing very quickly. Our differential equation is y prime is f of x and y, and if f is changing quickly, then our numerical method might not be able to catch up to that, if you will, if the step size is too small. When the derivatives of f are changing quickly, then differential equation is called stiff, and in those cases we have to be very careful. When we get to multi-step methods, we'll actually discuss whether the method itself is inherently unstable, and so it might not be a method that we would ever use, and in that case we'd be concerned about small errors just growing with each step and becoming more and more problematic as we go on. But in this lesson, we're going to focus on one-step methods. And in order to analyze the stability of a differential equation, we're going to consider a simple differential equation whose solution goes to zero as x gets large. We're going to consider the differential equation y prime equals minus lambda y, y of zero equal one, where x is greater than or equal to zero and lambda is positive. The solution is y is equal to e to the minus lambda x, and so as x grows, the solution gets close to zero and the solution starts at 1. So let's consider Euler's method. Euler's method is yn plus 1 is yn plus h times the slope. The slope is given by minus lambda y. We just plug in minus lambda yn. So the new value is yn minus h lambda times yn. Factor out the yn's, and we have the new value is 1 minus h lambda times yn. Now this, the y's, the sequence of points that we get will only go to zero if this factor 1 minus h lambda is less than 1 in absolute value because we want the solution to get small, the computed solution to get small when the true solution gets small. It still might be lousy, the computed solution might still be pretty lousy, but at least it'll be stable and the computed solution will get small when the true solution gets small. So. We need to consider the absolute value of 1 minus h lambda should be less than 1. And if we do the algebra, high school algebra, we'll find that this will be true if the step size is between 0 and 2 over lambda. So Euler's method is stable for this particular differential equation if the step size h is between 0 and 2 over lambda. Let's consider an example, the case where lambda is equal to 10. If we use the step size h equal 1, Euler's method becomes the new value is yn plus h f of x and yn. f of x and yn is minus 10 times yn. And so we plug that in, we get the new value is minus 9 times the old value. Since h is 1, starting with y of 0 is 1, we'd have 
the computed small y of 1 is negative 9, right? minus 9 times the original value. y of 2 would be minus 9 times y of 1, or 81. y of 3 would be minus 729. Clearly, these values are not going to 0. And that's a problem. Why does that happen in this case? Well, we said that the stability condition was 0 is less than h, less than 2 over lambda. Lambda is 10, so we need a step size that's less than 1 over 5. Okay, h equal 1 is way bigger than 1 over 5, and it led to real problems. Let's consider an appropriate step size. h is 1 over 20, or 0 0.05. Then the method becomes the new value is the old value minus 0 0.05 times 10yn, right, because lambda, again, is 10. So this just gives us yn minus a half yn, or yn over 2. The new value is a half of the old value, so y of 0 0.05 would be a half times 1, y of 0 0.1 would be a quarter, y of 0.15 would be 1 eighth, and so on, and those values are clearly going towards 0. And so we see that Euler's method was stable for this ODE, at least in these two cases, it seems to mirror our analysis. If h was bigger than one-fifth, we had a problem. If h was smaller than one-fifth, things worked out okay. Let's consider another example, the backward Euler method, which can be written the new value is the old value plus h times the slope at the right end of the interval. So this is what's called an implicit method, and we'll get to that in a few moments, where the new value depends on the new value. So we have yn plus 1 on both sides. We can only solve these equations easily when we have a very di easy differential equation, a very simple differential equation. Again, we're going to consider the same differential equation. y prime is minus lambda y with y of 0, zero equal 1. And again, the solution is y equal e to the minus lambda x. We plug in our method. The new value is the old value minus lambda y n plus 1, right, h, right, we have the h, and then we have minus lambda y, and the y is y n plus 1, so on the right-hand side, instead of only having y n's, we have a y n plus 1. We bring the y n plus 1 term to the left, and we solve, getting that y n plus 1 is 1 over 1 plus h lambda times y n for this simple differential equation. In order for the solution not to grow, we need this fraction, 1 over 1 plus h lambda, to be less than 1. And if we think about it, we do the algebra, we find that whenever h is positive, then this is going to be true, that uh, 1 over 1 plus something bigger than 0 will be less than 1. Such a method that's true, that will work, that will be stable for all values of h is called absolutely stable. So the backward Euler method is absolutely stable. The regular Euler method was only stable for 0 less than h less than 2 over lambda. We now consider the difference between implicit and explicit methods. For backward Euler, we noticed that the new value depended on the unknown new value. For the methods we had studied previously, like regular Euler's method, runge kutta two-step, runge kutta four-step, Taylor series method, the new values always depended only on the already known values. Explicit methods, such as those, we have the new value depends only on the old value, and if we have multi-step methods, which we haven't gotten to, maybe even we would use older x and y values. But the new value depends only on the already known values. An implicit method is written in the way that the new value may depend also on itself, on the new value itself, plus the current or older values of x and y. So those are implicit methods, and those are usually more tricky to solve for more difficult ordinary differential equations. But as we noticed in our stability analysis, implicit methods are often more stable than the explicit methods. Methods that depend on previous computed values, not just on the x and y ends, but if you go back further, x n minus 1, y n minus 1, and so forth, those are called multi-step methods. So as I just said, implicit methods typically have better stability properties than explicit methods, as in our Euler versus backward Euler examples. 
However, only for the simplest, simplest differential equations can we easily solve for the new value when using implicit methods. And we might have to combine using the implicit method with a nonlinear equation solver, such as Newton's method, if we use implicit methods on more difficult differential equations. You might want to consider for yourself analyzing another problem, the stability with respect to step size for the explicit trapezoidal rule, which is one of the two-step runge cutter methods. The new value is the old value plus h over 2 times the slope at the left plus the slope sort of at the right, that the slope that you get using an Euler step to get an approximation for what's on the right, versus the implicit version of that, where the new value is the old value plus h over 2 times the slope at the left plus the slope at the right. Okay, So you show that one of these methods is stable for 0 less than h less than 2 over lambda, while the other one is absolutely stable. A moment of culture. There were three hungry cannibals. One happened to be a chemist, one happened to be a physicist, and the third happened to be an engineer, and they found a human thigh bone. Well, the chemist decided that he would lick it. He'd put it in water and try to dissolve it because he wanted to eat it. The physicist tried to break it open to get at the marrow. The engineer cannibal used his intelligence. He took the bone, hit the other two over the head, and ate them. I'm Bruce Bouquet from the New Jersey Institute of Technology. Thanks for joining us, and may the power of math be with you.